topic is large drills with an emphasis on bones. So we're going to kind of start off with some serve drills. I'm going to turn around and face her. You're not going to hit it, but you're going to toss it. And we're both going to go through the motion, and I'm going to catch her toss. So oh, it's ready? Uh, I have to toss it so you can catch it? Yeah, down together. Ready? Can you slide? Yeah, come on. All right, so down. Yeah, and then I'm going to turn to this person, and he's going to go through the motion. And then he's going to turn and, and hit the surface. Right. So that's what we're going to kind of do. A lot of these drills we do today tries to keep players involved, engaged in the drill. When we do these drills, a lot of times we're going through simulations or imaginary things that we want you to, to pay attention. So, and that's what you have to sort of translate to the players. So it's important that when you're doing this motion, let's say Michael actually has the ball and I'm going through the motion, I want to I want to kind of go through a good motion. I'll serve three quarter, you're going to return it, and now I'm going to hit it back to you, and then you're going to catch it, and then you're going to serve it to me. So that three quarter serve, he's going to return it, and then I'm going to play it back, he's going to catch it, and then I'm the returner, and then I'm going to return it, he's going to hit it back, and then I'll catch it and do the same thing. say hit split. Okay, so uh, come on. Why don't you serve? Just give me an easy serve. So here's my here's my ritual as a returner. So when he tosses the ball, I'm gonna say toss. Toss, split, hit. So as a returner, that can help me engage before the ball is actually hit. So toss, split, hit. As a server, I may bounce the ball twice, deep breath, and now I like to relax my fingers. Alright, so let's get you guys moving a little bit. So let's have half of this stay on this side. A lot of times, I'll say, all right, Chris, a 
want you to watch their feet and see if they make split steps. A lot of times he's going to see something like this. Or, or, and not then hopefully good. when he goes back there, he's going to realize, hey, maybe I'm doing that same thing. I've got to make a good split. So it's, it's really a teaching opportunity for the players to, to get involved with some of those drills. And in, in a couple minutes, we're going to go through some feed drills, and it's the same idea. If I have my players hit down the line, down the middle, if they can't do it from the cell feed, are they going to be able to do it from the live ball feed? No. Probably not. So it's very important that these, we can use players. That allows me as the coach to run and kind of get closer to you when I talk so I don't have to yell and hopefully I get a better feed. So let's have a new tosser. So someone else take the Christmas plate.
these drills, you have a lot of little things that you're trying to put together. So they're not just getting up there and serving. You want to bounce it once or twice, take a deep breath, relax your fingers. Okay? So there's a, lot of, there's a lot of opportunity to really work a lot of things with a lot of these drills. That kind of covers a lot of the serve and volley and some returns. What do you think the most common situation in doubles is in high school tennis? Where are your players? <laughs> one up, one back for me. Yeah, one up and one back. Yeah. And so this, we're going to show you a couple of drills here that kind of hopefully will help players really figure out some best practices, some best success. For this drill, what we're going to do, first person, you're going to start kind of with your arms spread. You're just going to drop okay, so and you're going to feed it to, to one side. So the first person is going to come up, feed it to that corner, move in, and then try to volley in the middle. Next person is going to move to that side, move in to that side, volley to the middle. Oh, goodness. So you're just hitting one ball, a feed, and then one ball. Turn and watch Chris. You want to watch Diane. The ball's back here. I see the ball go by Diane back to that person. I'm going to move into the ideal volley position. Diane's got to move back to the team. You're watching this person. Okay. So here's the way the drill works. Chris is going to hit a cross court. This person's moving in. You're going to hit it down the line. You're going to try to hit it to those cones. So Kelsey's going to start here. The ball goes cross court. She moves in. The ball comes back cross court. It's going to come back. You've got to watch the middle. So after you hit your first ball cross court, stay back. I want you to hit the next one down the line. Okay, so you guys back up for me. Back and maybe come over this line a little bit. 
if she's really in trouble, what, what are her options? Where's she going to go? Yeah, so she's either going to lob it or maybe try to go down the line. So it's going to be very hard when, she, when that ball is free and cross court for her to bring it back cross court. So I really got to engage and protect the big part of the court. So that's one of the things you really want to get your players to sense is what's happening with their partner without looking at the partner. Again, just by telling, by me being aware of what type of ball is going to my partner, I can move in the best position. And a lot of players don't do And one thing you can get your players to do is, is to say to themselves, just before their opponent hits now, if anything you can get your players to track the ball, from baseline to baseline will help. So a lot of players don't pick the ball up until it's almost on their side of the ball, uh, on their side of the ball. So let's say I'm hit with Keith, and just before Keith hits, I say to myself, now. And that really focuses me to watch the contact, and it may also help me to make that little split step. I have some sort of, you know, basic, you know, open hand, closed hand, you can have a fake. Something like that. The key with signals is you want to make sure the server acknowledges that they got the signal. So that it, it's all right if you say it loud enough, you just say okay if, if they hear it. I don't know what the play is, but that lets the net person really know that okay. You know, if I know my partner's going to poach, I want to kind of put the ball up to the center of the corner right at their body because that's going to set up the partner puts a lot more pressure on the server too. So, you know, you probably don't want to use a poaching signal a lot on the second serve because that puts a lot of added pressure. Uh, but, but signals are, are really good. And again, as your players get a little bit more advanced, that would be something that you probably want to develop some signals. Uh, uh, eye formation is, is very good. So let's say if, if, if we're playing this and we're playing against the ad court, and the guy's just killing us with some cross court returns. And usually, the backhand, if I'm a righty and I'm playing the ad court, it's easy for me to go cross court with my backhand. On a hard serve, sometimes it's hard to go down the line. So, what I may try to do is play the eye or the Australian. So, let's say we're serving to the ad court, and, and I'm going to have my partner stand in the middle of the court, or maybe even a little bit to take away that cross court and see if this person can hit an aggressive shot down the line with their backhand, uh, with a one-hand backhand. Sometimes the two-handers are pretty good at it. So that Australian can really set up, or the eye formation can set up your strengths a little bit. So that would be something to try to develop. Um, as a coach, that's something that you want to look for when you're watching a, a doubles match, is saying, hey man, those guys are hitting some great cross court returns. Maybe we should see if they can hit some down the line by playing the eye, for, eye formation in Australia.